Hey guys, it's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can build your own homemade rod mill. By adding a little mercury to it, you'll be able to collect every speck of gold from your black sand concentrates or even your crushed ore. So let's get into it. Now, before we get started, I wanna give you some do's and don'ts when you're handling mercury, all right? Now, mercury has gotten a bad rap over the years. And believe it or not, at one time, it was used in medicine in the 1880s. And in fact, a lot of people were walking around with mercury amalgams in their mouth right now. Now the biggest problem with mercury is when it becomes a vapor. As long as it's liquid, it's good. You can handle it with your hands. It's not a problem. So with that in mind, always make sure that you've got water around for it to be in or if you make a mess, it has a safety container to go to. Now mercury is so dense that metal will actually float on it. See what I mean? Isn't that cool? And it doesn't matter how heavy the material is, it will float on top of it because of its density. Now the biggest problem when you're dealing with mercury is when it hits something, see how it breaks into a million little BBs? Oh, and that can be messy too. Now you're probably wondering, Jeff, why isn't it sticking to that copper penny? I thought mercury likes copper. And you're absolutely right. Mercury does love copper, but the copper has to be clean. And we're gonna go over that in a minute, how the old timers used to clean up their copper so that the mercury would stick to it when they were using it on their stamp mills after all the crushed material would have run over and collect up all the gold. But right now I'm gonna show you how to set up that rod mill. Cause I know that's what you wanna see. What you're gonna need is a rock tumbler. The biggest rock tumbler you can find and preferably made out of metal. Fortunately, I got a rubber one. And over time, the rubber contracts and cracks and it causes leaks and all kinds of problems. You're gonna see that here in a minute. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a whole bunch of steel rods and cut them just short of the depth of the drum. These are seven inches. We're gonna put a whole bunch of them in there. And that is what's gonna crush up your concentrates or your gold ore into an even finer powder and help amalgamate that mercury, whatever little tiny specks of gold are in there. I mean, really tiny gold. But in order for it to stick, like I showed you, it won't stick to it unless it's clean. Now, load gold is clean because it's fresh out of the rock. But if you have any placer gold, chances are it's not gonna stick. And I see a lot of guys having problems with mercury not sticking to their gold and they can't figure out why. And I'm gonna show you a few other tricks on how you can do that. But for Right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick our rods in here, our concentrates in here. Then I'm gonna show you what you can add to this to clean the gold and supercharge the mercury at the same time. Ooh, but I'm not gonna do nothing until you smash that like button. All right, so what you need to do is go out to either Home Depot or Lowe's and get yourself some sodium hydroxide. You can find it other names like caustic soda or lye. And you're gonna mix uh, a couple teaspoons or tablespoons into this material. What's that gonna do is the sodium is gonna supercharge the mercury and the lye is going to eat anything off of that placer gold so the mercury will stick to it. Now there is another way you can do that but it's far too dangerous and we'll cover that later because that's what the old timers used to do and it's very effective but oh so dangerous. So we're going to put all this stuff together and see what happens. Now I recommend wearing face protection and a respirator because you're working with sodium hydroxide and rubber glove. This stuff is nasty and it literally eats stuff out of your drain. Just a little. <laughs> and put your rods in there one at a time. And your con. And fill it up right about here with water. About three quarters. Now, you don't need a lot of mercury to make this work. Just a little bit. That's probably too much. Now this is an older rock tumbler. I've had this one for years. In fact, I made a video about this except using balls like a ball mill. And I'll leave a link to that video right about there. That way you guys can watch it. It's pretty much what we're doing today, but I've got a few extra little tips and tricks that are gonna help you out on this video. And as far as rod mills and ball mills are concerned, a rod mill is so much more effective than a ball mill because there's more surface area on the rods inside of the drum. So if you're gonna build one, don't build a ball mill, build a rod mill. So much more effective. Well, I'm gonna have to use some duct tape to seal this thing up to keep the water and mercury from leaking out. You know what they say, if you can't fix it, duck it. <laughs> Nasty. 
And make sure when you're working with mercury, you always have an emergency catch basin, either on the tumbler or panning, anywhere. Trust me, you don't want that stuff to get away from you because it'll explode into a million balls. You'll never be able to clean it up. Here we go. So we're just gonna let that grind away for about an hour or two. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna recover the amalgam if we have any in our concentrates. And then of course, how you're gonna get rid of that mercury so that you have nothing but sponge gold left over. And then I'm gonna teach you a few tips and tricks that the old timers used to do back in the day when they were doing this. It'll blow your mind, I guarantee it. Probably blow them pants off too. Now I like to put a rock underneath that so it tilts it up. So everything runs to the very back of the drum because sometimes you'll have mercury trying to leak out here and it won't do that if you have a rock under there. Now, while we're waiting for that to tumble, I'm gonna give you some more background information about mercury that's gonna blow your pants off. Now, one, mercury reacts with electricity. And there's been many people on YouTube have made these weird vortexes using electric current and mercury. I'll try to put some links down below so you can watch it. Another one is that mercury sounds off as gold on a Gold Monster 1000. Watch the meter. Isn't that cool? Now, most people don't know this, but mercury actually dissolves and consumes gold. Now, here's a thin piece of gold leaf, 24 karat, that's put on top of mercury. Watch how it's actually dissolving and ingesting the gold. So not only does mercury attract it to gold, it actually dissolves it. Now, if I was to continue adding more and more gold leaf to this mercury, it would continue to dissolve it until an amalgam formed, a thick, pasty form of mercury and gold together. And this is what the miners did back in the 1880s. And this is unfortunately how amalgam is made for your dental work. The only difference is silver and other metals are used to create dental amalgam. Now it seems odd to me that a substance like mercury, which has been deemed so dangerous and toxic to humans, is more than welcome to be put inside of people's mouths for generations on end. All right, that's been tumbling long enough. Let's turn that off. Remember, you got caustic acid in there and you don't want to mess with that, so. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's leaking. See that? You don't want to be breathing that. All right. Here's a trick that I'm going to show you. There's a washer. See the washer? Put it in there. Put your magnet on the bottom. See that? Now we're gonna dump that out. Ooh, what is that funny looking thing? And it's just gonna leave my mercury by itself. So much easier. Pan off just a little bit of that nasty stuff. All right, now you can use one of these to suck up all the mercury that you have in there. It's a lot easier. Tilt it forward. There is my amalgam. And that's the amalgam that I'm chasing down right there. It's not a lot, but you can see it clearly. Let's see if I can bunch it together for you there. All right, now remember I was telling you that the old timers had a secret about how using copper and mercury and how to make them stick, because I showed you that penny. Well, back in the old days, they used to use copper sheets right after a stamp mill to collect the gold. But if you notice, I got a copper pan here and it that mercury won't stick to it for nothing. And I cleaned the heck out, I scrubbed it. But look right here, see that? Look at that. Oh, it sticks really good there. See that? Look at that. That's what it should look like. And that's what the copper plates look like on the stamp mills. See that, how it's all collecting? And I got some over here too, right there. See how it sticks to it beautifully? Yeah, and amalgam will stick to that too. You can see little pieces of amalgam stuck in there. There's one there, one there, one there. Just like that. See, there's one right there. 
So what they effectively done is they would take 70% nitric acid and put it on a rag and then run the rag over the copper plate. And that's what I did here. And it etches into the copper and leaves this fresh copper behind. And that mercury will stick to it real good after that. You see that? So I put some here and here just to illustrate my point. And of course you can see where the nitric acid has etched away the copper really good right there. And I'll demonstrate my point, watch this. See that? See how it sticks? Isn't that cool? And then any amalgam is gonna stick to that too. After about a week of running the stamp mills, they'd shut them all down, clean out the mortar boxes, and then a guy would come through with a squeegee and he would squeegee all this off the copper plates, collect it all up and run it through a retort and then get all the sponge gold that was on the copper plates. And we're gonna squeegee this up too and see how much is in there, although I don't expect a lot. But I can see some amalgam right there. You see it? Look at that. See that? That's a piece of amalgam right there. Right there, see it? And see how it sticks to the copper? Nice. So my point is if you don't wanna use one of these, these chamois right here to squeeze your mercury out or a mercury press, all you gotta do is etch a copper gold pan and then just pan out your amalgam onto that. And I guarantee your amalgam will stick to the copper and the regular mercury will flow over and then you can just suck it up with one of these giant syringes. It's a lot easier than messing with this darn thing right here. Just like the old timers, look at that. You squeegee up all that mercury, see that? Get it all off of there. And see how I have some right there? Now, if you don't want to put all that in a retort, you can run that through a chamois. It's so much easier. That way you don't have so much mercury to deal with. There we go. And then you just squeeze the mercury through the chamois. There's the mercury, see it? All coming out. And just keep squeezing it till it all comes out. There it is, right there. Uh, that's our amalgam. I could squeeze that again, but I'm probably going to go with that and then just burn that and see what comes out of it. Now, in the old days, they didn't go through all that chamois part. They just scraped up the amalgam the way it was, and if there was mercury with it, there was mercury with it. They would shove that into a retort, burn it, collect the mercury back, and get their sponge gold. Now, the downside to that is, is a lot of that mercury goes over the table, goes across the shaker table, and then out into the tailing, and then, of course, down into the rivers, creeks, and streams. But at the time, they didn't care. They just wanted the gold, and that's why you have so much mercury in the rivers, creeks, and streams today is from all that runoff coming off the tailing. All right, now I'm going to show you what you do to retort. All right, we're using a doggy retort, and on the end of the doggy retort is this little cast iron plug. Now, what I like to do is put my amalgam in newspaper and then shove that into the plug, and then you thread that on the end of there. Now, I like to use plumber's pudding around there just to make sure this marker doesn't leak because you don't want that gas to be leaking out of there when you start vaporizing that mercury. We actually run and pipe water through the water jacket. That way it's even colder and it condenses the mercury out the tail a lot faster. We like to put cheesecloth on the end and put that into the water. So when it comes down, it drops directly in. No fuss, no muss. I like these doggies over the other retorts, the pipe ones that look like rockets. And these hold a lot more too. All right, let's go ahead and heat this monker up and see what we got. All right, here's what the results are after we did a burn. And here's a close up 200 times of what it looks like when we broke apart the little sponge gold. I don't think it was heated enough, but you can see the little fragments of gold and how they've all been collected. Some still have a little mercury on them, it looks like. And there's other materials in there that are byproducts of heating up the mercury. And there's a few stones and pebbles in there <laughs> because the little dish that I put it in had some dust in it. Now, if you're going to be working with nitric acid, please wear all the protective gear and make sure you have some baking soda on hand in case a reaction gets away. It'll help neutralize that nitric acid. And of course, all this is just for informational purposes only. If you decide to do this, it's on you. Now, there are easier ways to get fine gold out of your black sands. And one way that we like to do it is through smelting. And we use a collector metal like Letharge to collect all that up. It's a lot easier, it's a lot cleaner, and you don't have to worry about all this mess. But I wanted you to see how the old timers used to use mercury, and it's very effective. And if you use it properly, it's very safe. And I wanted you to see how gold sets off a Gold Monster 1000 
metal detector and makes it think it's gold. Isn't that bizarre? Oh, speaking of which, we're gonna be giving a brand new Gold Monster 1000 away at the end of this month. Not only that, we're giving away silver bars too. I got one ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce, 20 ounce, one kilo, baby, yeah! That's a lot of silver. And not only that, we're giving away bags of pay dirt from the sump mine. There's just gobs and gobs of gold in here. Now, if you wanna get your hands on any of this stuff, all you gotta do is become a premium patron by looking for this little link at the end of the video. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you instantly qualify to get in on winning some of this gold and silver and a Gold Monster 1000. And if you wanna see more videos on using Mercury, go ahead and click on that video right there. I guarantee you're gonna love it and I'll see you on the next video.